The Argument from Beauty Another character in the Aldous Huxley novel just mentioned proved the existence of God by playing Beethoven's String Quartet No. 15 in A minor, Heiliger Dankgesang, on a gramophone. Unconvincing as that sounds, it does represent a popular strand of argument. I've given up counting the number of times I receive the more or less truculent challenge, How do you account for Shakespeare, then? Substitute Schubert, Michelangelo, etc., to taste. The argument will be so familiar I needn't document it further, but the logic behind it is never spelled out, and the more you think about it, the more vacuous you realise it to be. Obviously, Beethoven's late quartets are sublime. So are Shakespeare's sonnets. They are sublime if God is there, and they are sublime if he isn't. They do not prove the existence of God, they prove the existence of Beethoven and of Shakespeare. A great conductor is credited with saying, if you have Mozart to listen to, why would you need God? I once was the guest of the week on the BBC radio show Desert Island Discs. You have to choose the eight records you would take with you if marooned on a desert island. Among my choices was Mache dich mein Herz rein, from Bach's St. Matthew Passion. The interviewer was unable to understand how I could choose religious music without being religious. You might as well say, how can you enjoy Wuthering Heights when you know perfectly well that Cathy and Heathcliff never really existed? If there is a logical argument linking the existence of great art to the existence of God, it is not spelled out by its proponents. It's simply assumed to be self-evident, which it most certainly is not. Maybe it is to be seen as yet another version of the argument from design. Schubert's musical brain is a wonder of improbability, even more so than the vertebrate eye. Or, more ignobly, perhaps it's a sort of jealousy of genius. How dare another human being make such beautiful music, poetry, art, when I can't? It must be God that did it.